Good morning and thank you for joining me on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter, as we join together for this service of Holy Communion. I'm here in the wonderful Corston Parish Church and you're welcome from wherever you're joining us this morning. If you would like to give any particular intentions for prayer during this morning's service, things which are on your heart or your mind or people that you're concerned about, then please do offer these prayers in the comments and I will bring these together at the end of our service before our final prayer of blessing.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ our Passover Lamb has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. 
From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another Advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them 
are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this point in the Church's year, the narrative of the Gospel seems to move on at quite a pace. It feels like just as we're getting used to something, along comes a change which takes some real effort to cope with. Some of those changes we long for. As we journey through Lent, we walk with Jesus on his journey to the cross. And when Easter Day comes, we share in the joy of those first disciples. We've been waiting for Easter Day for weeks, sometimes fasting and praying. So when Easter Day comes, it's a welcome change. As Thomas meets the risen Christ, we feel his relief and his recognition. As Jesus breaks the bread on the road to Emmaus, we share in the surprise and elation of that brief moment. As he appears on the lakeside and shares food with his disciples, our imaginations can take us there. And we, with those disciples, can enjoy the glow the warm, fuzzy feeling of the post-Easter period. But with the story of Jesus, as it is in all of life, nothing stands still for long. And part of the challenge of human existence is the paradox we live each and every day. I think, quite often, we'd like the world to stand still. There are days when we'd love it if everything could stay just as it is. But we know that life's not like that. Every day is new. Every day is different. And we can't press pause. We can't stretch out those days. I think back to our family trip to Venice last year, when for a few days the stars seemed to align and we had a time of near perfection. We longed to go back and to recreate something of our experience, but we know that we can't have exactly that same experience ever again. We know that we need to cherish the memories, and instead of clinging to the past, we need to move on to a new future. And so we find ourselves in the cycle of the Church's year, coming towards the end of the Easter season. We've shared in the resurrection joy, and now with the disciples, we need to prepare again for the pain of parting. Our Gospel reading last week was part of that preparation, and today's reading continues the same theme. Jesus knows that he's going back to the Father, and he's trying to prepare his disciples for their inevitable trauma. Because they must be wondering if this is it, if this post-resurrection Jesus will be around in this way forever. They've got used to having him around, and it's good. They want to hold on, to prolong this moment for as long as they possibly can. The reality is, though, that the world continues to turn, and things will change. Jesus will be returning to the Father, and they will have to get used to yet another change, yet another upheaval of their world. And so he begins to tell them about the Holy Spirit. The term he uses is translated as advocate, coming from the Greek word paraclete. Now this is a legal term for somebody who represents us, someone who speaks for us. But it also has a sense of consolation too, someone who ministers to us, someone who helps us in times of need. This very personal Holy Spirit, note the advocate is a he, not an it, is coming to be our eternal partner. I find that promise to be really quite moving. Because it's a promise to us, just as it was to his first disciples. Jesus knows that earthly life is full of change, littered with moments of joy and elation, but also punctuated with grief and pain. He knows this because he lived a fully human life. He experienced those highs and lows, and he knows that life can be tough. Jesus 
showed his humanity in the pain of his grief as he wept over the death of Lazarus, his friend. And so he knows that we need help. We need an advocate, someone to console us in the dark moments of life and to share our joy in the good times. That someone is the Holy Spirit, who is with us now in our worship and whose coming among us we celebrate in a couple of weeks at the great feast of Pentecost. But first, we need to attend again to the relentless march of the story of Jesus. Before we can celebrate with the disciples at the wonders of Pentecost, we need to walk with them to Bethany. We need to share their renewed grief as he is carried to heaven. We need to adjust with them to the end of yet another chapter. But we also need to look forward with them to all that the future holds. Amen. We affirm our faith by saying together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we are living in troubled times throughout the world with many people having to face tragedy in their lives. We know, however, that you, Lord, are with us in our changing situations, feeling our pain as a father for his children. Your love helps us through these challenging times. We thank you, Father, for your love and support. We pray for the church and all the clergy as they strive to find many ways to reach their congregations and pray that your love will guide and support their endeavours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. It is in these times, Lord, that we who live in the countryside appreciate more deeply the beauty of your creation. As rogation nears, we see and thank you for the work of those who are connected with agriculture, managing the land, crops and animals. The extra time we have to walk and enjoy nature has broadened our horizons. We enjoy our quieter roads and skies, which are providing less damage to the environment. We think of those who do not have the same opportunities for enjoying our outlook, those who live in high-rise flats or concrete jungles. Please offer them your comfort and support during these disturbed times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Recently, Lord, so much has been asked of our National Health Service and other essential bodies Everyone concerned has had to work longer hours and deal with emotional scenes for which they had no preparation or training. Please give them the physical and mental strength to persevere in these strange times. We give thanks for all the volunteers working in many ways to help others. May the spirit of togetherness always be part of our future. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many people, Lord, are grieving for the loss of their loved ones, their pain accentuated by the loss of contact at the end of those lives. We pray the mourners can turn to you and find the comfort you as a father have always promised us. May the departed enjoy life everlasting with you, Father. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you have always emphasised you are there for your children. Please help us to find you. You have shown us the way, but it is not always easy to follow. At this time, we need help to manage our new lives with so many changes. We think especially of those who are experiencing loneliness, mental strain or fear. Please strengthen our faith and encourage our spirit of togetherness in our local congregations. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest, make yourself known in the breaking of bread. Amen. The Lord is here, his Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Almighty and Eternal Father, 
And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit the broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did, in him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all the honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live for ever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia!
Let us pray. God our Father, whose Son Jesus Christ gives the water of eternal life, may we thirst for you, the spring of life and source of goodness, through him who is alive and reigns, now and for ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning at our act of worship uh, for this the sixth Sunday of Easter. Um, a few notices before we all go our separate ways. Um, there are quite a few today. First of all, to say congratulations to Maggie and Phil on the event of their 40th wedding anniversary. We seem to have a bit of a rush of wedding anniversaries at the moment. So many con congratulations to you, Maggie and Phil. Um, have a really lovely day. I know it's a bit strange in this socially distanced world, but hopefully you can still celebrate in an appropriate way. I've been asked to give you thanks uh, for your prayers. We prayed last week uh, for Maisie, Gina's new granddaughter, uh, who was quite poorly in hospital. Um, the great news is that she's home, uh, she's safe, and everybody is well. So uh, Gina says, thank you for your prayers, and we continue to pray for them as they get used to life as a new family. Uh, notices for further ahead this week. Wednesday, um, is the day for prayer breakfast. That happens at 9.15. It happens on Zoom. Have a look on Facebook if you're on Facebook to see details um, of that Zoom meeting when it comes up. It's just uh, a very um, informal gathering where we have uh, light-hearted chat um, and uh, we close with some prayers. So please do join us if you're able at 9.15 on Wednesday. Now, Audrey mentioned in the prayers uh, that we are approaching Rogation Tide. Uh, now, Rogation is one of those uh, things in the church's year which can slip by unnoticed because the three days of Rogation fall on weekdays. Um, we thought that what we might do this year is to offer a special evening service for Rogation Tide on Wednesday evening at 7pm. Um, and I need your help. If you are uh, going out for walks or bike rides at the moment and you're off enjoying the countryside um, and you're in amidst the fields and all of creation around us, could I ask you to do me a favour in the next two days? That favour is when you go out, please take lots of pictures. I know some people have been taking lots of pictures anyway and putting them on Facebook, so it shouldn't be too much of a chore for them. But if you are going out and about, take your phone or your camera with you and take a picture or two 
that summarises something of your experience of the countryside. Um, and I will hopefully be able to stitch all those together. So once you've taken your pictures, please do contact me by Facebook Messenger or by email and send your pictures through to me, perhaps with a description of where it is um, and what's in the picture. And I will try and use all of those pictures uh, for our service on Wednesday. So if you could do that today, tomorrow and, and send me the pictures on Tuesday, that will give me a little while to put them all together on Wednesday during the day in time for our evening service at 7pm here on Facebook and also streaming to the parish website. Um, so you're welcome to join us then as we think about rogation, we think about God's creation and we think about um, all the people who help to feed us, um, who live and work around us in the fields. Thursday, uh, we have Little Fishes Live at two o'clock. That's now on Zoom. Um, it's a really good gathering. So if you know any preschoolers um, or or people at the bottom end of school school years as well, then they're welcome to join us in the Zoom meeting. We put the details on the Facebook group. So keep your eyes on the Little Fishes Facebook page and you will see details for that. Thanks very much to those who continue to help with uh, readings and intercessions for our services. Um, it's never too late to volunteer. So if anybody wants to volunteer to help with those things, then please do just let me know um, and I'll send you some text uh, for a reading um, to be used on a subsequent week. Um, thank you to those who uh, are involved each week in our music. We're really grateful. Um, it's one of the things that sets our worship here in, in uh, the Corston group apart because it's quite difficult to pull together music within the week um, unless you have technically cap capable people like we do um, who can bring it all together in time for our Sunday worship. So I'm very, very grateful and I'm sure we all are um, for the life that you bring to our worship each week. Uh, the community helpline in Corston and the surrounding villages is still open and still running. Um, the telephone number is 01603 381 121. Um, that number is really important. It's staffed by volunteers and those volunteers are there every single day from 8am to 8pm. Um, and they're there to help you with practicalities, getting shopping and prescriptions if you're isolating or shielding. Um, they're also there for a friendly chat. If you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling like you just need some human contact and you don't want to um, pester the same people over and over again, um, then why not give us a ring on the helpline? There's always somebody there um, who's willing and ready to listen uh, and just to have a chat if you need it. But likewise, if you do need something practical, then ring also. Uh, we'll be happy to help. It's a busy week. This Thursday um, is Ascension Day. Ascension Day is one of those uh, quite often forgotten feasts of the church's year because it always happens on a Thursday. Uh, I'm quite confident that this year we'll have more people at our team service than we ever have before because it's online. Uh, we're worshipping together as uh, the Elsherman District team um, and the service will be streamed at seven o'clock uh, on Thursday. Uh, it will finish in time for the clap for carers, so you can go out and celebrate all those who are working to safeguard us in our communities. So seven o'clock is our Ascension service. It will involve members of the team, so all of our ministry team are, are part of that service, um, and you'd be very welcome to join us. Now, if you want to be involved in that service, there's a very special way you could be involved, and that is um, that we're trying to pull together a very last minute virtual choir um, for the final hymn. Um, now, it's a unison hymn, so there aren't lots of complicated parts to learn. And what we need is volunteers who are willing to sing along to a, an organ backing track in a pair of headphones, maybe off their telephone, and then at the same time record themselves, selfie style, singing um, into their laptops or tablets or whatever it might be and then send me the video, and then I stitch them all together, and then instead of just having an organ accompaniment for our final hymn, we'll have um, a host of voices from all over the team singing along. So um, it really is simple. It's simpler than it sounds. Um, so drop me a message if you want to be part of that, and I will send you a link to the music uh, and to the backing track, and I'll give you very clear instructions as to how you do it. Um, and if you could do that in the next uh, couple of days, that would be wonderful. So I, again, can put that together on Wednesday in time for Thursday. Um, so I would urge you if, you, if you are a singer, please do um, have a go at that. If you're a very high soprano, 
I know you're quite rare beasts, um, but we need um, some descant singers for the final verse. Um, so I'm especially keen to hear from anybody who's willing to give the descant uh, a go. The final thing to mention is that after this service, uh, there'll be an opportunity to meet together in our virtual refreshments on Zoom. Um, and a link will very shortly appear in the comments, uh, which will tell you where to find that. So please do come and join us for just a few minutes uh, to say hello, to, to see each other's faces again and remember who we all are um, before we get on with the rest of our Sunday. The final thing that I need to do is to draw together this service in prayer. Um, of course, the blessing does that. But before we have the blessing, I just want to bring together the prayer intentions that have been sent through in the comments and things that have come through to me um, that we want to pray for. So would you please join me in a brief time of prayer? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in these strange times, we continue to be grateful for those who care for us. For those who work for the NHS for volunteers and public workers, for those who work in our schools and in childcare, for retailers and delivery personnel. We thank them for their sacrifice. And we pray that they might know that they do your work here on earth. We pray this week especially for our school communities and for our school in Corston in particular. Again, we give thanks for the teachers and the support staff who work there. And we pray for them as they plan for a partial restart of school in the coming weeks. We pray that you will be with them in all their uncertainty and doubt and anxiety. That you would help to still their fears. Heavenly Father, we pray at this time for those who are bereaved. We pray also for those who have died recently. In the last couple of weeks, we've had the funerals for Peter Baisley and for John Cook. We continue to pray for them and we pray for their families as they mourn in these strange times. We pray for Colleen's brother-in-law, whose mum's funeral is tomorrow and he can't get to the funeral because he himself is shielding. Lord, we pray for your comfort, for your presence with all those who mourn. Give them strength and give them hope. And now in a moment of silence, we bring to you all those things which are on our hearts, which we've not spoken out loud our own fears and our insecurities. We ask them, ask you to take them from us. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto you and promises that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. And so now our prayer of blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.